Hi, welcome to my new video. Today I show you how I designed and made this particular shelf. For this project I have in mind something very simple and unusual. I want to exploit the strength and rigidity of iron to give shape to a shelf with suspended shelves supported by only an arm. Only two central points of attachment to the wall, one at the top, one at the bottom. After the first sketches I started to realize the project in Blender, a very versatile 3D design and rendering software. This step is crucial to have a visual perception of the result, but also to be able, in the end, to derive the definitive measure of the structure. Fixing the size of the shelves and referring to space that I want to occupy in the room, here it begins to define my idea with precision. I then decomposed the three-dimensional model and extracted the measurements, which I then rounded into a technical drawing. I leave you the PDF link in the description if you want to replicate it. I chose for the construction a rectangular iron bar of section 4 by 2 cm thickness 3 mm, on which I start to report the measure, choosing from time to time pieces based on the cuts already present in the first end. I tried to cut with plasma cutter. I know that this is not the use for which it is recommended, but I wanted to give it a try. You can actually cut, but still require a second grinding step. So it is better to make the effort immediately and cut it directly with the angle grinder. So I made all the cut, checking the schematics with particular attention to orientation to avoid mistakes. Measure twice, cut once. I made the longest bar before, so I optimized the material to get the minimum waste possible. Cutting all the parts is perhaps the most boring part, but is basically also pretty fast. Here are all the pieces, cut, catalogued, and sanded. I decided to first weld the coplanar part, dividing into three pieces, the central part and the two parts above and below, symmetrical and specular. Finally, the fun begins. Weld the bars between them. It is at this moment when my creation begins to take shape, but now it is important to keep the right angles. To do it, I help with clamps, and with a set square I built a few months ago, made for scrap metals. I borrowed an old electric welding machine before I bought this white welding machine and as a first exercise I create some tools. Starting with the electric welding has served me to learn, but now I will never go back. White welding machine is another planet. Now we start to assemble the parts. Once the three main pieces were joined, making use of an additional set square, started developing in a third dimension. The convenience of not having to chain the electrode, an electrode that you're afraid to lean on to avoid short circuit, or even worse, it is stick to the metal, and above all, to have a torch with a button always ready to give the welding point that holds together the pieces you are working on. I learned to always make small welds that hold together, and then complete the joint. To join the two main parts, I use a bar that acts as a guide. Thanks to this, I can align everything, but for greater precision, I have to clean the thickness given by the weld. I align the pieces with the bar, and also verify that the distance are equal. Holding with the hand, I also made the last joints. This welding machine was the best purchase this year. I wanted to learn how to weld for so long in order to make things like this, but I was afraid that the difficult was too much for our hobbies. I gave confidence to the Reboot RBM 2100, and I must say I am completely satisfied. These are my welds, not bad for someone who only learned two months ago. If like me you would like to try, but you are afraid that it is difficult, or if you think that it is not have the quality for a professional job, well, from these images you can understand that with this machine you are on the safe side. 
the RBM 2100 of Reboot work really well. I immediately noticed the difference in welding compared to the old electro welding machine. In a very intuitive way, you adjust the two knobs, volts and ampere at the medium scale, and depending on the thickness you go to refine the adjustment. Just try a little. Today they have updated the model. Inside is the same machine, but the front has even more intuitive controls. Instead of the two switches, has only one function selector. I ask Reboot for a discount code. I leave it to you in the description of this video. Ok, back to the shelf. Now it's about cleaning all the welds. I want a smooth look in the outer corners. I have in mind an industrial look. That's why I decide to leave the raw metal, protected only by a layer of oil. I want to discover the patina that forms over time. If there will be need, I will decide whether to use a protective or an oxidant. After removing the thickness of the welds, I proceed to ascending with a sandpaper abrasive disc, more delicate than the abrasive blade, with which I also go to sand the surface of the visible outer part. To remove the mark of the disc, I also make a pass with the rotor sander, just a quick pass. I proceed to the polishing of all the parts that face outwards, all the visible surfaces. To hold in place the shelves, I create threaded holes for screwing screws. Two fixing points for each shelf. I looked for some old wood but I didn't find anything I liked at the right price. So for the moment I choose pine planks, maybe too thin but very cheap. I have already decided I will replace it with better one as soon as I find it. A fast sanded on the edges and finally a coat of varnish. I take measurement for the holes on the shelf, I match them to the screws already in place. I also made the socket for the head of the screw, so it will be flush to the surface. Then screw the three shafts into place. Only the hole for hanging the bookcase is missing. I use a 8mm wall plug, first on the top and then at the bottom. I am very satisfied with the result. It's my first job of this kind and I learned many things. I definitely have an idea to perfect this project. In addition to the old wooden shed, I also have some idea to better illuminate the wall. But I don't want to reveal too much. Follow me for the second part. If you like the video, leave a like. If you have advice or suggestion, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.